let us take a look at what we are going to do in this video. A checklist. We'll first write a smart contract in Solidity, which is capable of storing and retrieving a numerical value. Next, we'll compile the contract, ensuring there are no synthetical arrays. Then, we deploy the contract, which is the procedure of storing the contract to the Ethereum blockchain. Finally, we'll interact with the deployed contract. First, let us start with writing our Solidity smart contract. For this purpose, we are going to use an online IDE called Remix IDE. To do so, open up remix.ethereum.org in the browser. Just go through the pop-ups. Just a reminder, this is an online IDE, so make sure it is loaded correctly. Okay, so this is the home page of Remix ID. On the left side, we have the file explorer. Here, we can create and store our smart contract files. These contract files will be stored in the browser's cache. So if the cache is cleared or the browser is reset, the files will be lost. So let us create our first contract using the create new file option. We'll call it storage. The extension of the Solidity program is .sol. Now let's start writing our code. Type pragma, select it from the suggestions, and it gives us the basic boilerplate for our code. The first line, SPDX license hyphen identifier, is used to specify the license under which the code is written. For us, it is MIT. The next line is pragma solidity version, which specifies the solidity program version that we are going to use. Replace the version with 0.8.20. That is the version of the Solidity program we are going to use throughout the course. Now, we will start creating a contract named storage. The file name and the contract name do not need to be the same, but it is best practice to have the file name match the main contract name. Next, let us define the body of the contract. We will define a variable named number of the type uint56. This is a state variable. A state variable means the value stored in the variable will be stored on the blockchain. Then we will write a function to store a number in the number variable. We will name it store with an input parameter named num of the type uin 56 It will be tagged with the public keyword to make it accessible to externally owned accounts. Then in the function's body, we will assign the value of num to number. Next, we will write a function to retrieve the value named retrieve, which will be tagged with the public and view keywords. The view keyword means the function is only reading from the blockchain, which means there will be no transaction cost. Then we will use the returns keyword to specify the return parameter and in the body we will return the value of the number variable. We have completed our contract. Next step is to compile and ensure there are no synthetical arrays. Go to the Solidity compiler tab. Select the compiler version, which is our Solidity program version. So 0 0.8.20. Now compile our program. If the compilation is successful and there is no issue in the smart contract, that is, there is no synthetic error, then we can say green tick over here. We also have the option to auto compile, which will automatically detect the changes in the editor and compile. Next, go to deploy and run transaction tab to deploy our contract. First option is the environment which is the blockchain to which the Remix IDE is connected. By default, Remix is connected to a simulation of the Ethereum blockchain known as Remix VM, which is obviously provided by the Remix IDE. So we'll use that for now. The Remix VM has provided us with some pre-funded Ethereum accounts for deploying and testing our contract. Next, we can specify the gas cost needed for the contract deployment. We also have the option to send either along with the transaction using the value option. We will come back to this later. Now select the compiler contract from the drop down and click deploy. Now in the bottom left corner, we can see the deployed contract. Expand to see the available functions. On the bottom logs, we can also see the deployment transaction receipt. We will not look into this deeper as it's from the simulation. So let us check the functionality of the contract. Let's store a number. 
we can see the transaction happened from the logs. Now let us retrieve it. Okay, we got it and it works. See you in the next video.